so we are back with another tutorial that is how to access or connect with aws rds mysql using lambda function for this i have created a blog post how to use aws lambda function with aws rds mysql so you can uh, go through this post and i have already created a piece of code that would be used to insert data in mysql rds uh, you can again fetch data from aws rds instance and use it anywhere or you can give it back to the uh, using api call you can you can give the data in response so you can get the repository from github you need to create a database instance then you need to fill all the details of database instance like username passwords and all in this python script so here are the credential host name name password and db name so you need to fill out all these you need to make sure that all security group settings are in place so let's go ahead and create the rds instance i'll be using mysql here uh, you can click on only enable option for rds pre-ta usage click on next you can choose the mysql version but uh, i recommend you to go through known issues and limitation for the version if you are using on production we'll be using a micro instance with 20 gb disk space let's give it the name app chip master username also app chip and password is also apichip password click on next you can choose or create a new vpc but for the sake of simplicity i'll be using a default vpc and a default subnet I will have this publicly accessible because I'll be connecting through shell and uh, just to keep it simple I'll be making it publicly accessible although you can you should make it uh, you should not make it publicly accessible uh, you should have proper security groups but as of now let's go ahead with publicly accessible you can choose availability zone if you want and we will be selecting an existing VPC, uh, existing security group, which is default one. Now, database name is Apichip. Database port is 3306. We are not, we are going to keep all the details as it is. We are not going to have backup, monitoring, and logs. If you want, you can enable these loggings. Okay, next, go ahead and launch the DB instance. Okay, the instance is getting created. You can see the status here it's creating okay so meanwhile it is getting created let's go ahead and uh, uh, create a lambda function click on create lambda function we'll be authoring it from scratch name it lambda rds or anything you want choose python 2.7 Choose an existing role, uh, Lambda Basic Execution. So uh, you can create a new role as well. Put all the policies like uh, accessing to RDS or accessing to DynamoDB or uh, or whichever service your Lambda function access. Can attach those policies and then choose that role. But as of now, we won't be needing much thing. We just need basic execution things. So I'm choosing ba uh, Lambda Basic Execution role and create function. So it gives by default a template uh, to add it on but what we are going to do is we are going to upload a zip file because to connect to MySQL instance we will be using PyMySQL library. So let's see how does it look like uh, but before that let's check the RDS instance so it's still creating. Okay so here's the piece of code let me walk you through it. We are importing PyMySQL library which we need which is present here so we, we need to install it in this directory only we have specified region let's go ahead and change this host is not yet available but uh, we can go ahead and uh, give other details db name is also apichip so we have created a function save events uh, which is going to insert the data it is making a connection and it is inserting the data 
So here in this, we are going to have a test table which have ID and name and we are going to insert it. And then we are getting data from this table and iterating over the content and just printing out the result. And here's the main function which is calling the function save events. The event structure look like this, so it has ID and name. So this is how our function look like. So this is our directory and here we already have pymysql. You can install pymysql using command pip install pymysql d dot. So what it does is it uh, install this for uh, in this current directory in this working directory of yours. So this is how you can install it. For this RDS I have kept if you check the security group here it is. So if you check the security group. I have kept the port 3306 open for any everyone. So this is allowed from anywhere. This is allowed from anywhere because just to demonstrate I'll be uh, uh, going into MySQL shell from my local to create the table. So let's see if it has been created or not. Not yet. It's taking a bit of time. So it's almost done. So it's packing up. So we'll be using MySQL shell to create test uh, table. So MySQL -h is for host. So we haven't got the host here. Let's see if has created it or not. Basically it's the endpoint. Okay, we have got the endpoint. We can go ahead and place it over here. Okay, we are logged in. And uh, we need to put the host name here as well. Okay, okay, we are good to go now. Let's see what all database are available. So it has created a database app pitch for us. We will be creating a table. Create table test ID not null. Mm, let's make it auto increment. And then name which is backer let's make primary key ID oops there is a syntax error let's go ahead and uh, let me copy paste it so that there should not be okay I, I put it a uh, I put extra brackets over there okay I didn't provide the type of this int that was the issue okay let's see if the tables has got created or not yes it is and uh, let's see its structure okay and check if uh, any data is available okay there are there's no data yet what we need to do is since uh, we have our code here so I'll remove this zip which I created before since we have changed the host name, uh, password and all. We create a zip again with the same name. Okay, we have got this zip and we will upload this on Lambda. Upload a zip file, click on upload. Here it is. Save it. Then we will configure a test event. Let's edit this, give it ID1 and name chip and save it so uh, we need to change the handler as well so it's main dot main since the file uh, name of our file is main and the function is also main save it back and then test it okay so we it has uh, been executed successfully and data has been inserted and it has also given back the data it has created an entry with id1 and name chip. let's go and see if the data is there or not so select star form test table and here it is let's go ahead and put one more data make it id2 and name aws save and then test so it has created one more entry which you can see here as well 
one more thing you can do is you can provide an api endpoint for this lambda function using amazon's api gateway and you can create a scalable architecture so using api gateway you will have an endpoint which triggers lambda function and lambda function in turn talk to your database instances so this is how you can go serverless and you can create a scalable architecture this kind of architecture i have already explained in a post scalable architecture using api gateway lambda and dynamo db so here i have used dynamo db as the database but you can go with postgresql or mysql or you can host your own database instance as well so this is it hope you liked it so like subscribe to keep us motivated keep learning and keep sharing thanks for watching